Good morning gamers, welcome back to Gatsy on Goosebumps, the only show in which I review and read every single Goosebumps book from R.L. Stein's original series. Today we are looking at Goosebumps number 60, Werewolf Skin. Very nice uh, classic Tim Jacobs cover art here, um, you know, depicting this werewolf costume that's clearly alive. It's creative, but the werewolf looks kind of cute. The tagline is, all dressed up and no place to howl. I'll take it. And the blurb reads as follows. It's a full moon. Do you know where your werewolf is? Picture this. Alex Hunter, photography freak, hanging out in Wolf Creek. Who lives in Wolf Creek? Alex's Uncle Colin and Aunt Martha. They're professional photographers. Uncle Colin and Aunt Martha are pretty cool. They only have two requests. Don't go into the woods late at night and stay away from the creepy house next door. Poor Alex. He just wanted to take a couple of pictures, but now he's about to find out the secret of Wolf Creek. Late one night, when the moon is full. Wolf Creek is also the name of a Australian um, horror film featuring like, a guy who murders like backpackers in the outback, which is significantly more scary um, than anything found in this. Yeah, the whole the whole town of um, Wolf Creek is sort of have this thing about werewolves um, to the point that Alex, when he's attending this new school for a few weeks while he stays with his aunt and uncle, who, by the way, who has ever done that in the past when you go on holidays, you enroll at school for like three weeks. Okay, fair enough. Anyway, the school actually has like, the teacher gives this little lesson on werewolves and it's this, you know, chance at exposition um, where Arlstein actually uh, subverts the Goosebumps um, law surrounding werewolves as established in the previous werewolf based entry werewolf of fever swamp um, by introducing this idea of werewolf skin don't need a full moon to turn into werewolf but their powers are increased when there's a full moon but every single night they put on these werewolf skins and then that turns them into a werewolf and they do that every night i guess and go around like hunting animals or maybe people i don't know so interesting concept, I like the idea that, you know, this skin turns you into the thing that, that, you, that you're dressing up as. But it's odd because the whole book's building up to like Halloween night where there's going to be a full moon, but like, it's not really that important because apparently people become werewolves every night. Alex's aunt and uncle, you know, tell them to stay away from this creepy house next door, the, what are they called? The Martins? The, the Marlings. They are werewolves, apparently. This old creepy house, this is where the werewolves live. And the, the girl that Alex becomes friends with, Hannah, doesn't really believe in werewolves. But there's these two other guys at school that it, you think they believe in werewolves, but it turns out they're just trying to prank Alex. Essentially, what they're doing is setting up, you know, this classic Goosebumps situation where you know one of these characters is actually a werewolf. General rule, the person or people that are rumoured to be the scary thing are never actually the scary thing. The crazy old man who you think is going to be a monster, it's never actually him. It's someone else. Alex discovers that there's no one actually living in the Marlins abandoned house and he sees like his aunt and uncle, who are photographers as well, they go out every night to observe nocturnal animals. No, they're actually werewolves. His aunt and uncle are werewolves. They keep their werewolf skins in the creepy Marlin's house next door, put them on and go kill deer, I guess. So he goes and tells Hannah, my aunt and uncle are werewolves. What do we do? You know, the teacher established that if you burn the werewolf skins, it, it kills them. But he's like, I don't want to kill my aunt and uncle. What should I do? So pretty much it's Halloween night. And Hannah's like, okay, why don't we hide the skins from your aunt and uncle. They won't be able to find them. They won't be able to become a werewolf. Um, that's what they do. Um, they, they, they wear, they wear the skins as like a costume, as like an excuse to like hide it from their aunt and uncle. And their aunt and uncle catch them. They're like, give us back those suits. We need them. And it causes them significant pain. But eventually they get through it. I guess it's like this sort of addiction thing, this Jekyll and Hyde thing. You know, you're compelled to do it. You're compelled to put the skin on. Because it says like, you know, they're really like crying out in pain and agony and stuff because they don't have their skins on. But after that, they're like, oh, the curse is broken. You know, the moon was at its peak and we didn't become wolves because you guys took our skins. Thank you. The curse has been broken. We're no longer 
werewolves. I feel like if that was a real thing, you could just like, I don't know, lock them in a room and throw away the key and then you'd be forced to not wear them. The fact that, you know, you have to put these skins on, it's, it's a, it does break with the whole, you know, compelling aspect of werewolf stories, which is like you become one whether you want to or not by having this element of, oh, I'm going to put this skin on because I'm, I'm, I need to do it. Anyway, good news. Uh, his aunt and uncle have been freed from their curse. Let's dump the skins next door, I said. No one will ever need them again. Let's dump them in the abandoned house. She hesitated. She seemed afraid to go back into that dark, empty house. But I went running over to the Marlins' house. I couldn't wait to take off the hot, smelly werewolf skin. I pulled myself onto the window ledge, then lowered my legs into the open bedroom window. I stepped into the room. Pale moonlight washed over the bare floorboards. Hannah dropped into the room behind me. Alex, she called. I started to tug off the heavy wolf skin. Something near the closet caught my eye. I stopped and walked over to it. A folded up wolf skin lay on the floor against the wall. Huh? <laughs> I let out a startled cry and turned to Hannah. How can there be a wolf skin in here? I asked. There are only two of them, right? You put one on and you gave one to me. Hannah stepped up beside me. Her eyes locked on mine. I didn't wear the one from this house, Alex, she said softly. I used my own. I just got it last night. Huh? I cried. I don't get it. You will, she whispered. She knocked me to the floor with her heavy forepaws and sank her teeth into my chest. And that's the end. That's the ending. It's really good. I don't get what she means. I got it. I just got it last night. So how, how who, who bit her? Did one of the, did one of the, 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 the aunt or uncle bite her? Anyway, it's cool though. She was a werewolf as well the whole time. Classic double twist. It wasn't the Marlins, it was the aunt and uncle. But it was also Hannah, yeah. Keeps you guessing. It's good. And it's a really, like, ominous, like, ending. Like, usually it's like the implication of something bad happening. He just got fucking bitten in the chest. It's good. I think having to put on a werewolf skin does take away a bit of the, 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 <laughs> the quintessential element of being a werewolf. But it's a, it's a cool idea that it's something you wear rather than something you become. It's a cool concept. And it's, you know, it's really, it's really suspenseful. It's really well written. You know, classic hijinks of, oh, we know someone's actually the werewolf. Who is it? And there's plenty of options. And yeah. Yeah, very solid Goosebumps book. Highly recommended. And make sure you have your werewolf skin nearby. Because it's apparently it's akin to like going through drug withdrawals. But only for like a few minutes and then you're fine. That's all for this week. Please join me next time, which I discuss Goosebumps number 61. I live in your basement, and I do. In the meantime though, thank you so much for watching, and please, stay spooky, for me.